Pewter is one of the most underrated yet fascinating metals in the world. You might have seen it in antique stores, medieval fairs, or even in modern jewelry and home decor. It has a rich history dating back thousands of years, once considered a valuable metal used for tableware, religious artifacts, and even coins. But what exactly is pewter, and how is it made? We'll explore its composition, the various techniques used to mold and shape it, and the finishing touches that give it its characteristic look, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get into how pewter is made, let's talk about what it is made of. Pewter is a metal alloy, meaning it is composed of multiple metals rather than being a pure element like gold or silver. Traditionally, pewter was made primarily from tin, which makes up about 85 to 99% of the alloy. The remaining percentage consists of other metals like copper, antimony, and sometimes even small amounts of bismuth or silver. These additional metals are added to improve pewter strength, durability, and melting properties. Older pewter alloys used to contain lead, which made the material easier to work with, but also hazardous to human health. Fortunately, modern pewter is lead-free, making it safe for use in utensils, drinkware, and decorative items. The combination of tin with other metals gives pewter its signature soft, silvery appearance which can either be highly polished to shine like silver or left with a matte antique finish. The first step in making pewter is obtaining and melting the raw materials. Since tin has a relatively low melting point of around 232 degrees Celsius, it doesn't require an extremely high temperature furnace like those used for iron or steel production. The tin is heated in a crucible a heat-resistant container until it becomes a molten liquid. Once fully melted, the alloying metals such as antimony and copper are added in precise proportions. These metals help harden the tin, making it more resistant to bending or scratching. The molten mixture must be stirred continuously to ensure the metals are evenly distributed, preventing inconsistencies in the final product. After reaching the proper consistency, any impurities or unwanted substances in the alloy are skimmed off the surface to maintain purity. This molten pewter is now ready for shaping and molding. Once the pewter is fully melted and refined, it can be shaped into various forms using different casting techniques. The most common method is mold casting where the liquid metal is poured into a pre-made mold that gives it a specific shape. These molds can be made from various materials, including steel, bronze, silicon rubber, or even traditional stone or clay molds. The type of mold used depends on the intricacy of the design and the level of detail required in the final product. One of the oldest and most traditional methods is sand casting, where a mold is created by pressing a pattern into fine sand, leaving an impression that will be filled with molten pewter. Once the pewter is poured into the sand mold, it cools and solidifies, taking on the shape of the design. After cooling, the mold is broken apart to reveal the rough pewter piece, which will undergo further finishing processes. Another common technique is centrifugal casting, often used for making small, detailed items like jewelry, buttons, or figurines. In this method, the molten pewter is poured into a spinning mold, which helps distribute the metal evenly and reduces air bubbles, resulting in a cleaner, more precise casting. For larger or more detailed designs, die casting is frequently used. This method involves injecting molten pewter into a high-pressure metal mold, producing intricate shapes with fine details. Die casting is commonly used for mass production, as it allows for high precision and uniformity in every piece. Once the metal solidifies, the newly formed pewter object is removed from the mold and prepared for the next stage of production. 
After casting, the raw pewter piece is not yet ready for use. It must go through a series of finishing steps to refine its appearance and texture. First, excess material such as sprues or seams left over from the casting process is removed. This is done using saws, files, or metal shears to trim away the unwanted parts. Pewter is a soft metal, which makes it relatively easy to engrave, stamp, or emboss with decorative designs. Artisans often use hand tools or engraving machines to add intricate patterns, monograms, or embellishments. In some cases, pewter objects are hammered or chased, a technique that involves shaping the metal by striking it with specialized tools to create raised or recessed patterns. This technique is commonly seen in antique-style pewterware, where decorative flourishes are highly valued. For pieces that require a high shine, pewter can be buffed and polished using fine abrasives or polishing compounds. This process gives the metal a mirror-like finish, making it resemble silver. The process of making pewter is a fascinating blend of traditional craftsmanship and modern technology. From melting and alloying the raw materials to casting, finishing, and assembling intricate designs, each step plays a crucial role in creating beautiful and durable pewter items. This metal has stood the test of time, remaining a popular choice for everything from historical reproductions to contemporary jewelry and decor. Its soft luster, versatility, and unique charm make it a favorite among artisans and collectors alike. Whether you're interested in pewter as a hobby, a business, or simply a fascinating part of history, understanding its production process gives you a greater appreciation for the skill and artistry involved. Next time you see a pewter tankard, figurine, or piece of jewelry, you'll know just how much effort went into creating it. And by learning about pewter, you can also gain insight into the rich cultural heritage and traditions that have influenced its design and use over time. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.